Okay, in lesson 6.1, we learned to group worksheets and we were able to make changes and formatting changes and formula changes to a bunch of worksheets or sheets at the same time by grouping our worksheets. We also created formulas with references to other sheets, not just to cells within the same sheet. And we also learned to do 3D cell references, which is we had formulas that were taking information from cells that were grouped together at the same time. So we didn't have to, for example, perform an add from this sheet, this cell, from this sheet, this cell, plus this sheet, this cell. Instead, we just said, group the sheets, and from all sheets, give me the total or the sum from the one cell, as long as the sheets were grouped together. In tutorial 6.2, we're gonna link workbooks. So instead of having references to other worksheets or other sheets within the same workbook, we're now going to have references to other workbooks. So the links are gonna be, the links that we create are gonna be from one workbook, which is one Excel file, and we're gonna take references from another Excel file. When we're pointing or when we're adding references from another file, that other file is gonna be called the source file. The file that you're creating your formulas in, that is going to be your target file because that's what it's gonna target. So. Make sure you rename your tutorial 6 file. I think I had you name it as tutorial 6.1. Please rename it to new mexico.xlsx file. So new space Mexico instead of tutorial 6.1. Let's open Office 2010. And the first file that we're going to open is going to be the New Mexico file. Okay, so the New Mexico file and we're going to make sure that the summary sheet is the active sheet. And we're also going to open the travel totals file. And we're going to perform a save as, so this particular travel totals file, we're gonna save as totals 2013. Total space 2013. In the documentation sheet next to author, put your name and the date, put today's date. And to make the summary sheet the active sheet. Let's also open the Utah sheet, worksheet, and the Colorado. Just to keep things somewhat organized, you're going to notice that all four of the files that we open are along our status bar, but they're all kind of piled up in the one Excel icon. So just make sure that all four of the files are, are showing. And in order to view all the files, we're going to go to our view tab Right? Remember that the view tab only really affects what's going to be showing on your monitor. If you want to make changes that are going to affect the printing of your 
Excel files, then you would go to the page layout. But for now, we're going to view and we're going to go to the switch windows area, which is in the windows area. I couldn't find it earlier. I'm used to the, the wider screen. But anyways, we're going to go to the switch windows button and it gives us an option of which sheet we want to see. So let's make, for example, the Utah worksheet, the active sheet. So there's a Utah sheet and make, we're going to make the summary, the active worksheet for Utah, which it is. And now let's look at Colorado. So go to Windows, switch Windows, go to Colorado, and make the summary sheet the active sheet, which it is. And now let's go back to our totals 2013 worksheet. In this particular format, all four of the worksheets, the Excel files, are stacked on top of each other. If we wanted to be able to view them all, we could go to our View tab and then go to, in, in, the, in this area here, I, I was looking for another name, but uh, for the Windows area, where the freeze paints window is we've used that before we're going to go to the left and there's an arrange all button click on the arrange all button and we want to show these tiled so we're going to click okay but let's make sure that we don't have to set windows of active workbook click okay and we see the four worksheets that we are working on. If you notice that the totals 2013 is the active sheet and it's a little bit darker gray along the, the title bar than the other files, the other worksheets that are not active. In the summary worksheet of our totals 2013 file, so this one up here, we're going to click on cell B6. And like most formulas, they always start with an equal, so we're going to put equals. And we're going to click in the New Mexico workbook. And it doesn't matter really where in the New Mexico workbook. So here's our New Mexico workbook. And we're going to click on it. But what I want you to notice is the, what happens with the formula bar. We click in the New Mexico workbook and makes the New Mexico workbook active for now. And we're going to click on cell B6. So by clicking on cell B6, I want you to notice a few things. First of all, it uses a quotation or a single quote from New Mexico, which is in brackets through summary. You see the single quote. Now, the only reason it's showing a single quote is because we have a space between New and Mexico. If we had a file name that did not have a space in the name, then it would not be showing the single quotes. Or actually, it, it might. No, no, actually, no, it won't. <laughs> if, there, if there's a space, it'll show single quote. And we're going to test my theory when we click on Utah as part of our reference. And I also want you to notice that the B6, the cell that we highlighted, first of all, the marquee is going. And notice that the cells have an app, that cell has an absolute reference to it now. As part of our formula, we're going to continue and we're going to type plus so notice that the, this is where we're active down here the marquee is waiting indicates that it's waiting for us to do something so we're going to add so we're going to 
put plus, and then we're going to the Colorado worksheet. So here's Colorado, and we're gonna click on B6 because we want the, the sum of all these sheets, these three other sheets, to show up in that one cell. So we're gonna go to B6. So notice that Colorado does not have a space. So Colorado, it's not gonna be in single quotes like New Mexico is. So now that we've chosen cell B6 from the Colorado workbook, we're going to add, so plus, and now we're gonna to go to our Utah worksheet and click on cell B6. Again, no single quote around Utah. And because this is the third and final cell that we're adding into our formula, we can go ahead and hit the enter key or we can click on the enter button. So we get a total of 346 in our cell B6 of the totals workbook. But more importantly, I want you to look at the formula. If you remember before, if we took a reference within our formula to a different sheet, but in the same worksheet, the same workbook, then we only had the name of the tab of the worksheet, the sheet at the bottom, so in this case summary, with the exclamation point and then the cell reference. Now let's do the same thing for cells C6, D6, and E6. So we're going to create external references by starting with the equal sign and then we're going to go to New Mexico and we're going to add the reference of New Mexico cell C6 plus the cell C6 from the Colorado worksheet plus cell C6 from our Utah worksheet. And once we add that, we click on the enter button or we can hit enter on the keyboard, but I wanna stay active in the, in the cell C6 of the summary sheet in the totals 2013 worksheet. And let's do the same thing for D6, so equals New Mexico D6 plus Colorado D6 plus Utah D6. And enter button. And let's do this one more time for cell E6. So start with equals. plus E6 plus E6. One important thing to notice is that all the reference, the cells themselves have been anchored. So they're all absolute reference. And if we wanna copy the formula, we're gonna to have to do something about that because if we copy this formula as it is, we're gonna get the exact same answer down below because the reference is locked and we don't want that. So in order to be able to copy down, notice that say, let's just say cell B6. If we hit the F4 key from our keyboard, if you remember correctly, that's gonna to toggle it so that the row is locked. Well, if we leave it that way and we copy our formula down and the row is locked, we're still gonna get the same answer because it's gonna go back to the same row. So what we need is for the row to not be anchored so that the row is not absolute. So we're gonna click F4 one more time and that makes it so that the column, the dollar signs before the column so that makes the column anchored, but not the row. And this is exactly what we want. Because if we copy down the rows, we, we want to be able to 
reference or have a relative reference of the row, but not necessarily a relative reference of the column. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to all the B6s here, and we're gonna click somewhere close to the B6, hit F4 twice, because that anchors the column, not the row, and then the same thing here, twice. Once we're done, we're gonna hit the Enter box, and we have to make the changes in all of our formulas across the top. So, F4 twice, F4 twice, F4 twice, lock in our data, F4 twice, F4 twice, F4 twice, lock in our data, F4 twice, F4 twice, F4 twice, lock in our data. So now, if we copy our formulas down, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. We can highlight the cells that we've just edited and copy them down. So we don't get the exact same answer for every cell because we unanchored the row and we left the column anchored, which really doesn't make a difference unless we were gonna be copying to the right. And that would make it so that the columns themselves would remain anchored within our reference. So let's go to cell B13 of the same total 2013 workbook. And Let's see, what do they want us to do? We're gonna in, insert a sum function. So, in B13, we're gonna insert a sum function that adds from cell B6 to B12. Well, if we know, if we know the, the range, we can, we don't even have to use the click and drag method, right? So we know it's a sum function, parentheses, we know we want B6 through B12 and to lock that data in we're going to click on the enter button or we can hit enter. So there's our total for our range of cells B6 through B12 and of course now what we can do is we can copy this formula using the fill handle across to C13 through E13. So now we have the sum function. So here we got 1855, 81, 889, and 55704. And now let's apply the comma style to range B6. So let's go to B6. B6 through C13. So through C13. B6 through, through C13, we're going to apply the comma style. So we go back to our home tab and apply the comma style with no decimal places. So we're going to go just to the right and we're going to decrease the decimal places by two. So we're going to click on that twice. And in the range of cells D6 through E13, so here's D6 through E13 we want to apply the accounting number format. So there's the accounting number format. So it's already set to accounting, but we want no decimal places. So we once again decrease the decimals by two. And we're gonna format the range B12 through E12 so B12 through E12 with a bottom border. So we're gonna go to our font area in our home tab, font area, and the button by default is usually the bottom border button anyway. So we're gonna click on 
bottom border and just so that we can see what it looks like we click on any other cell and we can see that we have a bottom border in the range B12 through E12. Now let's make our New Mexico sheet the active sheet and we're gonna go to quarter four by the way you notice how you can't see quarter four here and this bar is for the primary worksheet the field of the worksheet so whenever you have sheets that you cannot see the little arrows are right here on the left so we're gonna click on the right facing arrow till we see quarter four so we're gonna make quarter four active and in the animal habitat the children's dollar sign is going to go from 1786 to 2786 so we're going to it's going to go up by a thousand dollars 2786 actually before we do that let's escape the situation i want to have the children sell animal habitat. I want that to look, to, to be visible. So now we're gonna go back to our cell B6, edit to 27. So look at the 18,962. That went up by a thousand. So that should go up to 19,962 as soon as we lock in our data. So to lock in our data, we click on our enter button and immediately you see that cell E6 in the totals 2013 updated automatically. The reason it does that is because the files are all open. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save the New Mexico. Make sure that's saved. And we're going to close Okay, we're also going to save our totals. Save that. And we're going to close Utah. We're going to close Colorado. Make sure you save your changes as you exit. And we're also going to close our totals 2013 workbook so the only file that we're going to have open is our new mexico file so expand it and now we're going to go to quarter four worksheet once again so that's still the active worksheet quarter four and we're going to make a change to cell d8 so d8 we're going to change that to 435 so And our summary, we can't see the sheet, so we click on our arrows. There's our summary sheet, D8. That went up by $100. And the total for the adult sales goes up to 26,375. Make sure you save your changes and now you're going to close the New Mexico worksheet. We're gonna come back and open our totals 2013. So we can easily do that by going to our recent workbooks and we're gonna to go to totals 2013. Let's open that. And you're gonna notice that <clears throat> the automatic update of links has been disabled. We get a ribbon across the top. And when you look at cell D8 in the summary, you notice that the amount is 4,025. Well, we made a change and I believe it was like around $100. So as soon as we enable the content, that amount should change. So let's click on the enable content button and the amount went up by $50 from 4025 to 4075. And of course the column total increased to 81,939. Now the reason it doesn't automatically update on in the 
sequence that we did it right now is because the old file the other file the New Mexico file was closed so it had to actually go to the file and not really open it but look at that at the content of the file see what the changes were and propagate those changes to the file but remember that only happens after you click on the enable content bar or the button that comes along the yellow bar at the top so let's save our workbook and now we're going to make a copy of this workbook so we're going to go to file save as and we're going to call this audited 2013 so instead of totals we're going to change that to audited 2013 click save so now this particular file remember this is a copy of our totals 2013 file so now we have this copy of audited 2013 and we what we want to do is we don't want this file to have links to our other worksheets so we go to our data tab and in the connections group we're going to edit our connections so we're going to edit links because remember these the other worksheets are linked to this one right so we're going to edit the links and this shows us all of the links that are currently connected to this worksheet. So we have the Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah worksheets linked to this worksheet. So what we want to do is we want to break these links. So we want these values to no longer show links from these other worksheets. So we're going to click on break link and by breaking the links, notice that it says it will convert these formulas and external references to values. So they're going to go from references to numbers. So we're going to click break links. Now there are no more links, so we're going to close our dialog box. And when we click on cell B6, where we used to have a link to the other form the other worksheets, you notice that now these are all numbers. Now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, why do we have formulas down here? We broke the links. That's because these formulas simply add within the same worksheet that we have here. Let's close our audited 2013 file and let's go ahead and save changes. And now let's open our Colorado worksheet. So there's Colorado. And we're also going to open our New Mexico sheet. Recent. There's New Mexico. Let's open our Utah sheet and lastly our total 2013 sheet for those of you watching carefully yes I opened them different ways the first three files I opened using the Reese open recent dialog the total 2013 I actually went to the folder I did an open and then I browsed to the folder that I had the 12 2013 file actually where I have all the files located so make sure we're gonna make sure that the summary sheet in our totals 2013 worksheet is active and we're also going to make sure let's just make sure that all of them the summary worksheet is the active worksheet so for Colorado summary worksheet is active for New Mexico for Utah and finally our totals we're gonna go to our view tab at the top and in our window area
we're going to go to our arrange all and last time we tiled it but this time we're going to cascade it and what cascade means is that you can see all the files kind of being one on top of each other so you can get to all of them by going to one end or the other wherever they're slightly visible so you can change to the whatever worksheet you want to work in and let's say you like working when the files are set up this way within the window you can actually save the workspace so when you open a workspace it automatically opens excel to this exact configuration of those four those four files the way they look so we're going to go make sure you're in the view tab go to save workspace and we're going to call this the themes theme parks workspace and we're going to save it in tutorial in the same folder that we have all our other files so but notice that the extension is not xlsx right it's an xlw so it's an xl workspace so theme parks xlw we're going to click on save and if we made any changes click save and let's go ahead and close our workspace so close just close all the files <clears throat> so we go to where our folder was and we're looking for our theme parks xlw so when we launch it it's going to open up excel in the and the files that we had open in the exact same layout oh hang on why don't we open it using 2010 so we're going to close our book file let's go to file open and we're going to where i have my files And here we're looking for our XLW. There's our theme parks open. So are all of our files open in the exact same configuration, which is Cascade, that we had before? So that's how you create a, a workspace. So it's not necessarily a file. Well, it sort of is a file, but the file simply says, open up these documents in cascade order, in this particular order. So, let's go ahead and close all of our worksheets. And since we didn't make any changes, we really don't need to save anything, so. Close. And we're done. Now, one thing that we didn't get was a dialog box that indicated to update our files. So, when we open up theme parks, some of you may get a don't update button somewhere. So if you get it, click don't update and that's pretty much it. So that is our tutorial 6.2. Now we're going to work on tutorial 6.3 and 6.3 is going to be working with hyperlinks and then we're going to get a little bit of a of an introduction to using the web apps which kind of works with SkyDrive and believe it or not they are actually free. No, you cannot use the web apps for this class unless it specifically is an exercise from the book asking you to work on web apps. So with that, I will close all my files since I didn't do anything. We're not going to save. And I will see you in class.